Welcome back, guys. Well, today I'm out on a hike and going to head up uh, into one of the local mountains and uh, just do a little bit of an overnighter camping. Got Royce with me. This isn't, uh, you know, the minimal gear kind of uh, overnight camping. It's just uh, camping to have a nice night. It's going to be uh, pretty chilly tonight, going down to about 9, 10 degrees Celsius. Right now, you can see mix of sun and cloud, and it's about 16. So it's pretty nice out. Uh, I've had a lot of rain lately. And so I'm expecting to find a lot of mushrooms in the forest. So hopefully we'll get to do a little bit of foraging on uh, the hike up the mountain. Like I said, it's about an hour uh, to get up to where I want to camp. Seen some deers on the way in. It's going down a logging road to try to get into this place. It's pretty beautiful, isn't it? It's down by a gorgeous river. It's going to be hiking up some old ATV trails. We've still got some sunlight, so that's good. So you can see I'm in a bit of mixed forest right now. We've got some uh, maples and um, balsam fir, cedar here and there. Pretty damp in here. So I'm praying we'll have some mushrooms. The old ATV trail, you can see there's quite a bit of water. But I got my old school hikers on. These are awesome. These are Wind River. They're waterproof. Um, great little summer hiker. As for other gear, I have my Osprey 36 liter pack right now. Got my little emergency beacon here. Hopefully won't need that. Um, and I got my sleeping bag. My light summer sleeping bag, actually. And uh, oh, I got a wool blanket. I think I'll need that tonight. And uh, yeah, just a small kitchen. You know, I'm not gonna make anything too crazy for dinner tonight. But uh, I'll invoice this food, of course. So, as water bottle. Got a little bit of water, too, because we're not uh, going down by the river. We're going up a little mountaintop there. I don't know of any springs up there for fresh water, so I've got to hike in my own. I was just thinking it might be nice to have a saw on the trip, and le voila. What is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a survival challenge. This would be, like, the biggest win, the biggest score. Heck, yeah. I'm going to bring this along. Bonus. Yeah, okay, you never know what you're going to find. Probably should do that uh, challenge I was talking to you guys about, minimal gear. See what you can find in the woods, you know. Sometimes you find old frying pans, bush furniture, stuff like that. It's all pollution, of course, but if you can repurpose it and use it for yourself, there you go, recycling. Of course, Royce is living his best life, hiking around. <whistles> Goes off in the bush after something. Good boy usually comes back out. I do have him on the tracker right now, just in case he uh, decides to go for a tour. Sometimes if he smells something uh, exciting, he'll uh, he'll go for a little little tour in the woods there. But uh, thank goodness he, uh, like you saw, he'll come back on the trail pretty fast. Well, I found some chanterelles, but they're kind of yucky. These ones aren't that fresh. These ones have been eaten by the bugs, as you can see. So not very good. The other day, you guys may have seen on my Instagram, I got a lot, actually, uh, after the rain in one section of forest. Mm, these smell like apricot, although they're a little bit old, so they don't have too much of a smell to them. But uh, I got a huge basket full the other day, so I'm confident I'll find some more. Now here is some ghost pipe. There's a lot of this in the woods. Um, some people eat these. Raw, they don't taste like much. Maybe a little bit bitter, kind of a weird taste. Um, they are really, they kind of like have a texture of a bean sprout and the moisture of a bean sprout. Um, I don't eat too many of these. If you eat too much of them, you can get a bit of a stomach upset. Um, but uh, there's a lot of them around. So if you do eat them, uh, be aware of the precautions with them. Uh, they do contain some toxins that, uh, if you eat them in a moderate amount, can cause you some distress. Now you may think these are chanterelles, but they're not. They are pretty yucky. They look like they're some... Uh, Old Suillus there, they've got the kind of the little pores at the bottom. Bolit family. So definitely not a chanterelle. So you can't see through here, but there's a little bit of a beaver pond, a little swampy zone in there. Really hard to see, but there's some lily pads. Yellow things through the trees, hard to see. But uh, Royce just went in there and had a drink. It is pretty hard to pack the amount of water required, especially when you bring an animal with you too, you know. so. Really grateful for these little woodland ponds and also for these uh, you know, little you know, puddles and stuff like that that you can kind of drink out of along the way. 
keeps the weight down in my pack. Now here we go. Here are some button chanterelles. They're really young. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. This is what you want to put on top of your steak. Really cool. I'll take a few of these. Awesome. Aha. Here is another wild edible that I truly enjoy. This is a painted bolete. Uh, this one's a little bit, eh, a little bit yucky. But uh, as you can see, top is beautiful, a little insect riddled. There's a little veil here, and you can see underneath these yellow pores. So this is a painted suillus in the bolete family. Um, you'll typically find them, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of white pine duff there. Uh, they're really good, actually. Nice and crunchy. I just cook them really well. I quite enjoy them in a meal. Interesting to see some of the fall colors, uh, a couple leaves down. We've had a bit of a drought, so that's a stress on the trees, and quite often you'll see that um, some of the leaves turning red and yellow and then falling off the trees at this time of year. But it doesn't mean an early fall, it just sort of means there's been a bit of a stress uh, this time of year. Now I'm going uphill, a bit of a job, but you can see sort of where the water runs down in the spring, down these rock faces. Spin you around to where I was, down that way. Ah, it's pretty slippery, you gotta be really careful if it's wet. And we're in an oak forest now, and you can see there's a lot of little acorns on the ground. That's really cool. They're not very big, but uh, definitely a lot of acorns this year. It's going to be really good for the squirrels and the blue jays and the like. And here's another chanterelle patch. I'll kind of leave these guys right here. But look at how curly and frilly the caps can get. This is an old one. The false gills under there, telltale. Gosh, it's been such a great year for mushrooms and chanterelles in particular. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods. Let me know down below uh, if you've been doing any mushroom foraging and what you've been finding. Now we've come across some mushrooms that are poisonous on the trail. I want to take a look at those. So here's an Amanita mushroom. This is poisonous. So you can see the little cup at the bottom here and it's got a little speckled cap. And underneath the cap are gills. Um, you'll have to take my word for it, it's hard to get a focus on this. But there's a few of them around here, um, so don't mistake those for chanterelles. Well, here is a sight for sore eyes. I'm super excited to see this. This is a Lactarius indigo. Let's take a look. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just fresh. And it bleeds blue. Take a look. It's a blue latex, basically, that comes out of this. This is a really good mushroom. I'm gonna take this one. Yay! I love finding unusual things like this in the woods. This is really awesome. This is the second one I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, mother load. There's a whole bunch of these chanterelles in the forest. Got my pack with me, so I'll probably take these back to camp. I'm gonna dehydrate these um, over the fire. Not tonight, but uh, dehydrate them with the rest. There's a lot of lichen on the trees up here, and as you can see, there's a big diameter to them. It means the air quality is really good. Lichens are an awesome indicator of air quality. I'm not sure if you guys knew that, um, but uh, just beautiful. On the tree there, it's just a really nice little old forest up in here. A lot of deciduous trees, the odd red pine in here. I'm kind of out of breath, just hiking up this big hill. We're almost at the campsite. You can see a bit of the terrain now, very different environment. These tall oaks on this peak here, a lot of exposed rock. We'll have some really good views in just a moment. There's your first view at it. That's This is just a few moments from where I was before. You can see all the other little mini mountains in the background. Big hills, really. And here's the view. See little mountains all around. Beautiful spot. Okay. So that's going to be the view from the tent. You can see the river down there where we were earlier. All the little mountains just under some oak trees have been ravaged by the uh, gypsy moth. Quite windy up here. But let's show you the spot where the tent's going to be. It's going to be kind of right here in this flat spot with the moss. It'll be nice. There's some scrub here. Uh, some pine. And of course there's actually wild blueberries over here. So we'll take a look at those. Who knows, we have blueberries in my oatmeal for breakfast if I can find enough. <laughs> the bears haven't eaten them all, but uh, we've got some low bush blueberry. 
all in here. Very typical on these um, rock faces to find blueberry. So lucked out. And there's St. John's wort and some juniper. So you can see the little berries. That's where I made the, uh, well, I gathered berries to make gin last Christmas. So time to get set up. Already there's some of the stuff. Let's get camp all organized, getting Royce all tied up. I don't need him zipping around after deer. He just about took out a chipmunk two seconds ago. <laughs> we said chipmunk for dinner. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get uh, the tent set up now. I actually brought the winter tent because it's windy and it's going to be cool tonight, so I don't want to draft underneath it. Just getting Royce's dinner, a little cheese on top. Of course, he eats that first. It's a leaf. So he's not used to eating a little teeny camp bowl, but he's going to have to get used to it. This is the life of a camping dog. This is my little sleeping bag, the Nature Hike Outdoors uh, downfilled sleeping bag. Pretty small, sort of fits in the palm of my hand. So I'm going to get that set up. I'm going to have the wool blanket for tonight, and I'll have this guy too. <laughs> oh, we're not going to eat it, no. Um, so I'll have that, and I also brought, I've got something that extends the uh, warmth of my sleeping bag. Right here, this is the uh, Thermalite Reactor Extreme, so see to Summit. So you put it inside your sleeping bag, and it actually makes the sleeping bag a lot warmer. Kind of like t-shirt material. There's a tent. It's the real Rand. It's all set up. A nice bed of reindeer moss, so it'll be really comfortable. Just preparing the mushrooms here, and you can see I just cut the end off of the indigo lactaria. So you can see how blue it is, that uh, latex. Very nice. So I'm going to put these in my pack, in my little foraging pack there, just to uh, take back to the cabin and to dehydrate them. Well, I just switched out my shirt. My other one's pretty sweaty. I'm at the task now of getting some firewood. Got a uh, little fire pit set up there um, on the uh, rock face just to my left. So I'll have a nice view with a small campfire tonight. Nothing crazy, just enough to kind of boil some water for my soup tonight. Um, bugs up here are pretty bad. There's these little gnats. So I've got my Pyactive spray. Um, hopefully that'll help. But they're right at my face all the time. It's really annoying. I don't think they bite, but they're just kind of like all over the place. So just getting a little bit of kindling. I do have... Um, my fire starters that are made of birch bark and uh, wax, beeswax. I got that in my pack there, or sorry, paraffin wax rather. The paraffin and um, birch bark pucks that I usually start my fires with. So I've got those and get a little bit of tinder here and we'll get some, uh, we'll use that saw that I found actually to uh, get some dry dead wood off of some of these old, old oak, well, young oaks really. Here on these rock faces, uh, this is woodland sunflower. Uh, favorite of the birds seems to be everywhere up along here you take a look it's pretty awesome really really interesting little uh ecosystem up here on these little uh mountaintops you know i'm super glad to be up here in these hardwoods it means that we're gonna have nice nice wood for the fire tonight so inside the tent, the sleeping bag set up, and my little uh, Sea to Summit um, blankets in there too. And on top, you can see some of my favorite camping brings, bring alongs. This is the uh, wool blanket, uh, federal issue, Department of Defense, <laughs> military wool blanket. So this is going to keep me nice and warm tonight. So the fire pit's all set up. Just enjoying the nice views here and the sun kind of dappling the little Two tops. See those bugs? Ooh. Pretty soon, make some dinner. Speaking of the bugs, you know, nature always provides when you need a hand. And right here, this is sweet fern. Uh, I'm going to take a bunch of this. This can go on the fire. And uh, it produces a lovely, sweet smelling smoke. Some people will make a tea out of this uh, to help for stomach ailments. And bowel issues. Um, this smells amazing and it keeps the bugs away. So I'm going to grab a bunch of this to put on the fire later. So I brought a book with me, one of my favorite books, Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Um, just amazing. Uh, I just love this book. You know, if you have a connection to the land, you will really enjoy this. Um, it's just like a breath of fresh air. You should get it. I'll just hang it out in the tent for a little bit. Royce is exhausted. This is totally exciting for him. You know, he hasn't been camping way too many times. So uh, he's just at my feet here fast asleep except most of the tent. <laughs> he made his little nasty, like, pull, balled, balled up all the little blankets and uh, found his little space. And I uh, just have a little snooze. We'll probably have dinner a little bit later. 
As the sun kind of goes down, have a nice fire. Don't want to burn through the wood too quick. And have a nice evening. Got some soup for dinner. So I'm going to have that. A little bit cool out here. It's almost 8 o'clock. I'm going to make some dinner now by the fire. Uh, it's getting cool. The wind is still, I don't know, 10 kilometers an hour. Um, it's going down to about 9 degrees tonight. So I can already feel the chill on the air. So I want to get down by the fire. Here we go. I'm going to get rid of the bugs. A little bit of sweet fern. Nothing clears out the bugs like that. Really nice smelling smoke too. I'm going to get a lot of heat for this. Um, this is beans, basically beans and tomato sauce. I'm going to heat this up on the rock over the fire. Um, I don't do this very often, so hopefully it won't do me in before my time. So here's a blueberry patch for my breakfast. I've scouted that out. A little bit of blueberries here, like a handful or so. That in my oatmeal tomorrow morning. So lots of them on this hilltop. I was just admiring um, this plant right here. This is sumac. And take a look. Look at that bug. Isn't that insane? It's all metallic. Beautiful. Oh, the fire. She's nice and warm. Great view. Sunset's behind me. The sun's actually going to come up if it comes up tomorrow. It's going to be kind of partly cloudy, but it'll come up that way. There you go. <laughs> I want to point out, you can see in the distance, a little cell tower over there to provide service to the region. So camping with LTE. Not that I want it or need it, but so it is. There's a huge bang here in the fire, and it turns out it was the, uh, the rock that we're on kind of big chunk of it just popped. I guess there's some moisture in it. I'm uh, sniffling here because I'm getting the smoke in my eyes. Hopefully the wind dies down a little bit and uh, the direction changes a touch. <laughs> white rabbit, white rabbit, white rabbit. Yeah. Rice is just hanging out away from the bugs, surveying his kingdom. I have him tied up because uh, you know, things move around and go bump in the night and then he feels the need to go and check them out. Don't need him to go check them out, so let's leave him tied up. Well, my soup is ready. I'm not eating amazing tonight, just a bit of ramen noodles. And uh, beans are over there, so I'll have the beans after I have my noodles. Nice warm meal on a cool night like tonight. I see the sunset. You can see the shape of our little, little mountain here. Shadow on the other one there. Beautiful sunset. Mm, great. Nice hot meal. I don't know what I'll do after supper. I'll probably just enjoy the fire and relax. Ah, just take in the air. It's really nice. The bugs have died back, so that's really good. The sweet fern cleared them off of the hilltop. I um, made a nice little smoky fire at the beginning. So I can definitely enjoy a night without the bugs. I think the cool weather too will, um, will tromp them down for the night. I was just thinking this would be a great spot to camp uh, in the fall. I think the colors would be great. There's a lot of pine and stuff, but with the oak around and the maples off in the distance, I think it'd be great. In the distance, you can start to see the, uh, I don't know, the dew come down, mistiness to it. Beautiful sunset. Look at the baby's blanket sky. Sun's just down. It's dusk now. I bet you there's lots of deer that come up here in the night. Coyotes, maybe. Definitely bear, probably because of the blueberries. But, uh, I don't know, I think with a dog around and just making some noise, I don't think things are going to come too close, especially with the smoke and stuff like that. Got uh, bear spray if necessary. Tent's just up that way. But uh, I don't think we'll run into any trouble tonight. But <laughs> believe you me, I'll be turning this on if we do. You guys remember the one time I was camping um, and the coyote kind of ran up to the campsite? Uh, I heard a dog running like super fast towards me. This is before Royce and I was like something's like <laughs> coming at me and it was a coyote um so i started yelling at it and stuff and it uh, i think it was just on its little route and then i happened to be there so uh startled it away i was making my chili it was kind of early winter i think as i recall and it was cold really cold and windy um and i was trying out my new little wood stove that i made not the one i got not the dantial outdoors one but the other one and uh <laughs> glad the coyote uh took off after that i just uh, you could, i've shown the flash on it. it's kind of like Swoop its little head around and then it took off. So it was fine. But don't think we'll run into any trouble tonight. 
All right, second course, tomato beans. Yummy. You know what they say when you're camping. <laughs> Baked beans, they warm you twice. <laughs> So we're starting to lose our light around here. So what I'm gonna do is take Royce for a little walk around the hilltop here, just to do his little evening business. And uh, I'll probably tuck in to bed, listen to the birds. Oh, I wanted to mention um, some of the birds I'm hearing out here are woodpeckers and beautiful hermit thrushes and blue jays, of course. Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, about, I'd say, six o'clock in the morning. Sun just rose. You can see behind me there. And uh, there's some clouds in the valley of the little hills over here. So uh, oh, it was a great night. A little bit cold. Went down to seven degrees Celsius last night. But I was pretty warm in my bag. And definitely the wool blanket was a great bring. Because when I got a little bit chilled, I could put the wool blanket on top. Uh, so I'm just going to get some fire started this morning and get some oatmeal in me. So this morning I woke up to the sound of the birds. I heard just a chorus of thrushes, which was amazing. And I heard a woodcock flying overhead. And I heard the whip or will, the signature sound of the Wild Yam show here. So I was like waking up to my own theme song. It was really nice. Uh, whip or wills are endangered in the region. So I was really, I haven't heard one in two years. So it's really, really nice to hear one and uh, wake up to one this morning. getting some water boiled up for some tea and oatmeal. Um, pretty soon I'm gonna go get some blueberries though for my oatmeal. Uh, the native wood roaches are coming out of the logs. So they're heating up. They're kind of gross. The first time I camped around here I thought they were cockroaches but these are just native wood roaches. They just eat detritus. So they, uh, they're they not gonna get in your gear and get in your house and cause a problem. That's what I thought the first time I was camping around here but uh, those are just a native uh, wood roach that we have. Now here's a plant I don't see that often. This is a cliff fern. Uh, it's really, really tiny. Just beautiful, beautiful green fronds, but really short to the ground. So this is a very unique um, environment. We don't see that often. A lot of other little cool plants here. Everything seems micro miniature because the soil here is really, really thin. Just heading off getting blueberries, I want to direct your attention towards the east there. Take a look at the rays of sun on the cloud bank. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if I've ever seen that. That's so cool. Here's one of my little blueberry patches and not too many blueberries, but here we go. Start off with this guy. They're really, really small. These are wild blueberries. They taste amazing. And it's going to take a while to sort of scan this patch. It's been a little bit of a tricky year for them. They've been very droughty. So it's hard to kind of, sometimes, you know, you're here five minutes and your cup is full. But this year seems like, I don't know if the bears got to them early. There's one. But uh, it take a while. I might just need a handful or so for my cereal. My oatmeal, rather. Oh, there's a few just down here. A lot of flavor packed in these little tiny berries. Well, sure is slim pickings today. There's not even a lot of, you know, green blueberries on the uh, low bush blueberry up here. So, I don't know, not a great year. Maybe last year was better, but I doubt it because it was uh, kind of droughty as well. So we'll see. Sometimes nature says no when you ask for a gift of your woodland food, but you take what you can get and be thankful for it. What is in abundance is the sweet fern. So I'm going to take a few of these leaves for tea. It's a beautiful fragrant tea, medicinal as well. Not that I need it for that today, but um, lots of it around. It smells so good, so I'll just make some tea out of that. Lots of moss here. Let me tell you, that was the best thing, is to put a uh, tent over the moss. It springs back after the fact, um, but it gives you a really good night's sleep. Because There's no um, spruce up here to take down and put spruce boughs down to, um, to rest, so this moss is uh, awesome. Usually after this year, it ends up drying up on the rocks and stuff like that. 
So, but when it's nice and soft, it makes a good bed. So right now I'm, you know, camping on crown land. That's land um, that, you know, is public for us to enjoy. Um, really great. So if you're in Ontario, um, you want to get out on these public lands, um, go ahead. It's a, uh, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, there are some rules and regulations about it. Like you can't, you know, I think camp longer than 28 or 30 days in one spot. Um, but uh, just treat it with respect. Don't uh, leave a lot of garbage or don't leave any garbage actually. And make sure to leave no trace even though this is called crown land i mean this is really uh territory of, of the algonquin people so uh, very important to respect that and to honor that well the sun's fully out again over that cloud bank i've got my oatmeal i put some um dried cranberries in there as well as my blueberries so it's gonna be good and i've also got my sweet fern uh, i put it in some coffee actually because sweet fern's not going to wake you up so uh this is a great way to greet the day everybody cheers Smoke's still getting my eyes. Yeah. That's good. The sweet friend gives like a really nice voice is behind me. <laughs> I just fed him his breakfast, but he kind of wants some of mine. I did give him a cranberry. Anyways, yeah. No, the sweet friend gives a really nice, um, I don't know, I say floral, but a sweet ferny taste to the tea. Or coffee, rather. See? You need the coffee, I'm going to wake up. See how cool it is with all the steam rising off everything, and of course the smoke from the fire. <laughs> Just want to point out how much I really like this uh, this area. It's so unique. Everything's so in balance. You know, the moss prevents all this runoff of water after rainstorms on this uh, the cliff. It's just soaking wet to the touch. Um, just super damp. You can just see how much water is there and how it prevents gush of water off of this little cliff edge. Um, there's a lot of little staghorn sumacs, a lot of beautiful grasses, native grasses, and there's also some sunflowers at the back. These are the woodland sunflower there in the aster family. Uh, that's why... Royce likes eating them. Royce loves eating asters. Uh, they do have medicinal properties, and maybe he knows that. Um, tender shoots of asters are edible. Um, so he enjoys nibbling at these. A little chickadee over here talking to me. But this little ecosystem is just amazing. Perfectly developed. Definitely older because of all the oaks right here. Got the blue wild blueberries. Just beautiful. Here's an example of perfect camouflage. This moth evolved in this environment to mimic the rock. Isn't that cool? And right here, a little gem studded puffball. Let's take a look. These are an edible puffball, but you always gotta be careful. You know, they can look like young amanitas. So you always wanna make sure you cut them open. They should be white all the way through and not have the little shape of a mushroom on the inside, which you would see with an amanita mushroom. So this is a solid little white ball all the way through. It is edible. It is a gem studded puff ball because it's got the little, little ridges on the top. I don't really like them. The texture itself is kind of nasty, <laughs> really spongy. Some people like them with butter and garlic. I once had a whole bunch of them and thought they'd be great, like little baby potatoes or something, but ugh, I couldn't finish them. They were disgusting. <laughs> Right over here, we even have some wild strawberry coming up. It's pretty young, so there's no flowers on it. We've got our blueberry over there. Oh, and a little one right there. So lots of little things if you stare down at the cliff surface. just reading a bit of um, my book there, The uh, Braiding Sweetgrass, and it's that passage there about the wood thrush. How cool and how poignant is that? Uh, so nice to hear the thrushes, um, yeah, waking me up in the morning and putting me to bed at night. Ah, it's nice to fill the lungs with really fresh air. And there's a spot where the tent went, fire's out, things are packed up, ready to go. As you can see, you know, if you're worried that it was going to be damaging you know, the moss up here, not a chance. I've kind of fluffed up some of the grass. 
but a good rainfall everything will look as it was so leave no trace camping it's the way to do it well the fire is dying down i'm just enjoying the morning here just sitting out on this rock it's nice and warm going up to about uh, i think 18 degrees today or so so it should be a nice day to hike back down and enjoy the forest again well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of a little Crown Land Camping Overnighter. I hope this encourages you to get out before the summer's over. All right, hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.